This is 21.1 electric fields. Today we're going to calculate and draw electric fields. I've got to run down to the edge. I'm going to have my doors open. Okay, just pop it open. Here's the equation for calculating the electric field. An electric field is the space around a charge. So you can think of the Earth creating a gravitational field, and anything that gets caught in its gravitational field gets pulled towards it. So the same idea for a charge. Any charged particle that ends up in that electric field is going to get affected by it, either pushed away or pulled towards it. So to calculate the electric field, we use something called a test charge. You don't necessarily need two charges to have an electric field. You do need to have two charges to have an electric force. And since the electric field is some part of the electric force, um, they use what they call a test charge. Now, you don't want that test charge to be too big because then it will outweigh the, um, the charge that you're actually trying to find the electric field on then it'll be the two interacting. So we use a test charge, a small charge, that will not affect the electric field. So if we write this down, we have the electric field is the electric force over the test charge, which is that little prime. That prime means test charge. But if you want to be less confusing, just call it Q2. So if we break this down a little bit, we know that force is K Q1 Q2 over R squared. So then this Q2 goes down on the bottom, Q2, and they end up canceling. So it's just K Q over R squared, where this Q is what's creating the electric field. Now let's draw a picture that kind of goes with this. You have Q1, let's say it's positive. And it has an electric field. And in order to figure out what that electric field is, we put a little test charge in it. It doesn't matter if this test charge is positive or negative. To, in order to measure it. That's what this equation is saying. So it's saying that we're going to put a little test charge here and see what happens to it. So we can actually figure out what the strength is of the actual charge that we're trying to find. Or the electric field at that point. Now the closer you are to the electric, to the charge, the stronger the electric field is going to be. And the further away you are from it, the less it's going to be. Just like gravitational force. The closer you are to the Earth, the stronger you feel the pull. The further away from it you are, the less you feel the pull. So when you're up in orbit, you only feel the pull as an 8.9 meters per second squared acceleration. Where here on Earth, on the surface, you feel 9.8 meters per second squared acceleration. So the force is stronger when you're closer to the Earth. Cups, cups, I don't see any cups. So in order to represent these electric fields, we have electric field lines. So here's a couple of examples of electric field lines, which is kind of what I drew on the board here with these arrows. Um, with these ones, we have a negative and a positive charge. So you can see that the electric field lines actually connect to each other. And here we have two of the same charge. So they're either both positive or both negative. And you can see they're actually repelling each other. Now these lines up here are representations. But there really are such a thing as electric field lines. They're invisible. But when we put charges in some um, iron filings, you can see the iron filings actually line up with the electric field. They are real. They're really there. We just can't see them. They're invisible. If you've ever done it with a magnet, you can see it with a lot of iron filings. You see those things. Same things. Those are magnetic field lines instead of electric field lines. So here's how to draw those. They are vectors. Positive charges have them pointing away, and negative charges have them pointing towards. Notice that they never cross, so you're not going to have crisscrosses in there. They're only going to either connect, so if you have positive and negative, they're going to connect, 
or they're going to repel. You can see these lines bending away from them. I'm going to have you guys get up here in a little bit so we don't get too comfortable. We're going to get up and walk around in a giant circle. And that sounds fun. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you electric field lines. Um, you're going to get up and you're going to walk this rectangle down these aisles, and we're going to push um, Alex's table back just a little bit there. Make she's tabled, and that way you can walk. And when you walk by, I want you to take a look at my fancy little device here. Um, what you're going to see is a little um, like bolt of electricity goes in between these things. If you want to touch it, you are welcome to touch it. You don't actually have to touch it. You can just get pretty close to it. And the little electricity thing will just touch your finger. It tingles. I don't think it hurts. It tingles. Um, so why that's happening, you'll just walk in a circle. And once you've seen it, you can go to your seat. Or if you want to stay up, you know, keep walking the circle for a little while. That's fine. But I have to sit here and crank it. So that's what we're going to do on the next slide. You guys ready? No. What do you mean, no? It's so exciting. It's electricity. Okay. I said you don't have to touch it. You can just look at it. It's not a challenge. All right. So, electric fields. Um, when you charge up like a balloon or something, or your cat, when you're petting it, you charge it up, and then you set it free on your sister to shock her. Um, it's about a thousand newtons per coulomb. So that's just like a little tiny. That's probably like what this is. A little snap. Actually, my cat gets pretty static, so maybe that's a little bit more. Um, you know those old style television tubes, the CRT ones? Not like the flat screens that we have anymore, but the CRT, the big ones. Um, those ones are about 10,000 newtons per coulomb. If you've ever put your hand kind of near the front of one of those glass telephones or televisions, you can hear the crackle. Is it like one of those things where you, like, you put your hand yep, on Yep, that's it what this is. Then, yeah. It's just not as strong as those. Um, in order to create a spark in the air, 3 times 10 to the 6, so you can actually see there'll be sparks in here, and that's about 3 times 10 to the 6. And then electrons um, around a hydrogen atom, 5 times 10 to the 11, so really, really, really strong. This is why I can't put my hand through the table. Think about it. Think about an atom. Um, what they usually do with an atom is they say, okay, electrons are flying around, and the atom is about the size of a football field. So if you look, the atom would be the size of a football field. Do you guys know how big the nucleus would be? Hmm? Yeah, it's like a marble size. So, be marble. Yeah. so there's a lot of space in the atom. If there's so much space in the atom, why can't I put my hand right through this thing? That's because of this right here. The electron, 5 times 10 to the 11. So the electrons in my hands are repelling each other. So they're repelling each other so much that I cannot push my hand through itself, right, or through the table. It's because of this electric field, the repulsion between the electron orbits. Otherwise, nothing would be solid, right? It would be kind of weird. All right, um, when you're coming around, please don't touch this. I'd like to keep the static charge on it. I'll let you guys play with it at the end of class. So you can get close to it, but don't try to set it off yet. We're going to talk about it on the next slide. Okay, so go ahead and stand up. Get ready to walk around in a circle with some of the time. I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to go
And line up and down these aisles, and you're going to walk right here where Diane is standing and down that aisle. So you're going to come up this aisle and down that aisle in a circle. And go ahead and walk by and see if you can see my electric field. Keep walking. Walk, 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 people. Walk. You don't have to go away real fast. You can go away for a little bit. Get moving. It's not doing anything. You want to put your finger in it? Anybody? There to do it? <laughs> Doesn't hurt. It just tingles a little. You want to be chicken? It's between the two balls. <laughs> this rubber belt and on the inside of this ball is a little metal brush and the um, the rubber strips off the electrons from the metal brush so to gain a since it's stripping electrons those electrons go through the ground in this wire that's supplying a power and it has a positive charge since it's a conductor as it gains positive charge over here those um, positive charges spread out evenly because positive repels positive so they're evenly spread out, and you end up with a bunch of positive charge up here. Now, the stronger the charge is, the stronger the electric field is. So I have electrons in my hair, right? Yeah. And as the... Oh. <laughs> as it gains... That's a nice hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's better this morning, I think. Okay, so um, the electrons in my hair are attracted <laughs> to the positive charge here of the Grand Van de Graaff generator. Now, why is my hand not doing this? It has electrons in it. It has a lot of mass, right? My hand has a lot more mass than my hair does. So it's not going to fly up into it um, like my hair does. My hair is really light. So since it's really light, the gravitational force is not strong enough to hold it down, not as strong as the electric force. The electric force is a lot stronger. Um, it's just that my hand has a lot of mass and it's connected to these muscles and stuff, so it's not going to fly towards it because it just doesn't have enough charge. Ugh. It's annoying. Um, now, when I connect my finger to it, which I don't really want to do. <laughs> no, don't, please. Let's do it with one that's not hurt. Yeah, I, I tried to cut my finger off this today, the Saturday. There we go. Okay. So what's happening now is that the electrons from the Earth are going up through my feet and going to the top of this ball so that it becomes neutral because everything wants to be neutral. Charges attract to each other until you get a neutral charge. So as long as I'm touching this, electrons are being stripped off for this, but then are flowing back onto the ball to make it neutral. So it takes a while for it to build a static charge after I've done that. So you can hear a little bit starting to get it back. But as long as my hand's on here and connected to the earth, it becomes neutral. This is why you don't want to go out there and grab a power line. 
because the power line is charged. It's electrons flowing through it. It has a charge on it. The Earth has a ton and ton of electrons, which if it lost a few isn't a big deal, so it's not really charged. So it can give up some electrons, and it's fine. But when you connect your hand to the Earth, those electrons in the Earth flow through you and onto the power line to make the power line neutral. That's what kills you, that flow of electricity through your body. So don't grab power lines. Yes? Because they're not touching the ground, right? They don't have they don't have the connection to it. So the bird itself, it has like its little feet. <laughs> Here's your power line that has electrons flowing through it, right? These are little electrons. And then you have your bird feet, right? There you go. Your bird. But because the bird has some sort of resistance in its feet, right, the electrons, it's easier for the electrons to flow through the wire. But as soon as you connect the bird to the ground, here's the earth, then these electrons are going to flow up through, actually, in this case, the electrons will flow through the bird, right, and into the earth to make this more neutral. So if so if you connect it from here to here, all these electrons are going to flow through you. So if we weren't on the ground? Then if you weren't on the ground, if you were a bird or tightrope walk, walker and just on this, it'd be fine. Or if you hang from a power line, you're fine. If you hang from two power lines, though, <laughs> not that you would do this, but that. Yeah. Because okay. they're going to have different charges. As long as you have a change in charge, which we actually call that potential difference. As long as there's a potential difference between one spot and another, the electrons are <laughs> going to flow to make them even. Just like high pressure and low pressure clouds. High pressure goes to low pressure until everything's that. Or um, hot to cold. If I have a heater, the heat is going to spread out through the whole room. It's going to try to make the whole room the same temperature, equilibrium. Same thing with charge. The charges want to be at equilibrium. We want the charge to be the same. And that's because charges repel each other. So if you have zero charge here and a whole bunch of negative charge here, this negative charge is going to flow here until they're all the same charge because they're being pushed away from each other. If this is all negative, those electrons are going to spread out as much as they possibly can. And they're going to do it as quickly as they can. So if you are touching the wire, they're going to spread to, from you because that is the easiest medium they have, where the air itself is kind of more of an insulator. So it's not easy for it to flow through the air. So it's easier to flow right through here. Okay, um, so I have our practice here. Should be really, really easy. And then I have five clicker questions, and then you guys can touch this if you want. You know, it is building up a serious charge. <coughs> okay, so our electric field practice here. We have a positive charge of 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. It experiences a force of 0.85 newtons to the right. What is the field's magnitude and direction? Now, a lot of people were getting confused on the homework from Thursday. They were like, what's the magnitude? And they automatically went to the magnitude for vectors. Okay, that only works. Magnitude is just the number of the vector, right? If you have stuff all in the same dimension, then you don't need this because this is magnitude for two dimensions. Magnitude in one dimension is just add all the stuff up because it's in one dimension. It's like saying I went four meters north to the store and five meters south to the school or something like that. Then you go four minus five because they're in opposite directions. But you don't need this because this is for angles, right? For your x and your y. So the magnitude would be the four and the five, and the direction is the north and the south. Magnitude is just number. So when I say what's the magnitude and direction of that location, the magnitude you're going to find using this equation, and the direction is going to be to the right. So let's go ahead and do this. Hopefully you've already done it. We're going to use this. The electric field is going to be 0.085 newtons over 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs.
2.43 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. Don't forget your units. Especially for these um, chapters, pretty much till the end of the year, your units are going to help you figure out what your, or what the equation might be. Any questions? Okay, I got five quick questions for you. Let's start with this one. The electric field strength at point 0 0.3 from the point charge is 4 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. What will be the electric field strength at this point if it's at point 6 instead of point 3? This one's a little tricky. This equation twice. Here's what you're going to do. You have the electric field, 4 times 10 to the 5. You can ignore this and this. K is 9 times 10 to the 9. We don't know what Q is. And this is going to be over 0 0.3 squared. So find Q. Once you find Q, remember that Q is what's producing this charge. So all we're doing is taking our test charge and moving it here instead. So we need to know what the electric field is at that point. We know it's going to be less. So it's going to be at least B or C because it's moving away from the charge. Once we find Q1, we'll plug it back into the equation. Or it's 0.6 away. So find Q1 and plug it in there. 